Uh, thank you. I, and uh, thank you to uh, Professor Wark and uh, the Honorable Jean-Jacques Blais for joining me today as well. I'm also pleased to welcome my liberal colleagues, uh, the justice critic Sean Casey, MP from Charlottetown, and child care critic Lise Saint-Denis, MP from Saint-Maurice, Champlain. So yesterday afternoon, I introduced a private member's bill to make CSAC more transparent and accountable to the Canadian public. Uh, the Communications Security Establishment of Canada, or CSAC, performs a very important role for Canadians. The intelligence experts there work to keep our country safe from foreign, domestic, and cyber threats. And it's part of an international network to combat terrorism. The Liberal Party of Canada has a long history establishing Canada's framework for national security. A Liberal government created Canada's first peaceful signals first peacetime signals intelligent function by an order of council in 1946, and then the Liberals established CSEC in 2001 following the 911 terrorist attacks in the United States. Now there are problems. The laws governing CSEC have not been updated since 2001, and as we know, there have been rapid adv advances in internet and communication technology since then, and CSEC's laws have not kept up. So CSEC is engaging in the widespread collection of the communications of Canadians, both at home and abroad, under very broad authorizations by defense ministers. And they've been collecting, CSEC has been collecting metadata, the record of your phone calls, your texting, internet activity, essentially, the why, how, when, where, and with whom you are connecting and communicating. That loss of personal control over the privacy of Canadians' communications activities violates our fundamental rights. La croisement du pouvoir et de la capacité de surveillance doit s'accompagner de responsabilités plus grandes à l'égard du public. Le Parlement ne peut exercer exercer son devoir d'examen. Le ministre de la Défense nationale dispose d'un trop grand pouvoir lui permettant d'ordonner au CSTC d'acquérir les communications des Canadiens. Et le chien de garde actuel agit trop dans le secret et ne sert pas suffisamment l'intérêt public. Many of us willingly provide personal information through loyalty cards. We all love to get those points. Hello, Bridgehead. <laughs> or through social media networks such as Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. But we can, we can control how much we share. It's a choice. What we currently cannot control is our own government through CSEC monitoring, collecting, analyzing, and keeping data about us through our internet and communication activity. This bill aims to correct that. This bill will restore much needed public confidence in the operations of CSEC by updating its legal statute. Canadians need to know that CSEC is protecting their security, but they also need to have confidence that it operates within a clear legal framework of accountability and protects their personal information privacy. They want laws that make sense and are suited to the realities of global communications today. And I'm very encouraged by this recent Supreme Court of Canada decision on the privacy of internet activities. I believe this bill complements that decision. So a few details about the bill. The bill will strengthen lawfulness and protect privacy. The Minister of Defense will be required to obtain an order from the Federal Court of Canada to authorize CSEC intercepting or acquiring communications, including metadata of Canadians. And happily, this corresponds to last Friday's Supreme Court ruling. The bill will strengthen accountability. The chief of CSEC must inform the minister and the commissioner of any operational incidents that impact the privacy of Canadians, and the commissioner watchdog will have a stronger mandate. The bill will strengthen transparency. Within 90 days of the end of the fiscal year, a public report must be tabled in Parliament on the activities carried out by CSEC. The bill will provide direct accountability to the Canadian public. The bill creates the Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament, Canada's first ever committee of parliamentarians devoted to the study of intelligence and security in Canada, bringing Canada in line 
with the legislative practices of our major allies. And I want to acknowledge uh, Wayne Easter, uh, MP Wayne Easter, uh, Senator Hugh Siegel, and Senator Romeo Dallaire for all of their work on the subject of, a, of an Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament. So this committee will be composed of members of the Senate and the House of Commons. It will have fewer than half of its members from any one political party and will report annually to the public. The CSEC Accountability and Transparency Act, Act, in conclusion, in sum, maintains CSEC's effectiveness while codifying a framework of accountability and transparency, those very important Canadian values. By protecting personal communications, it will help to restore the public's trust in this organization, an organization that is so vital to protecting the security of Canadians. Merci de votre intérêt et je tiens à remercier tous ceux qui m'ont aidé avec ce projet, surtout Professor Wark. So I would like now for Professor Wark, Wark to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Joyce, and um, uh, hello, everyone. I just want to um, commend Ms. Murray for what is an ambitious, in fact, unprecedented effort to um, amend the, um, the legal regime around the Communication Security Establishment Canada. I think this is very timely uh, and it's very necessary. I, I want to say that I uh, truly appreciated the way in which Ms. Murray um, consulted with, I think, a, a very broad range of experts and, and people who had had some involvement in the field of, of signals intelligence to get their views. I think all of our understanding of the bill, whether we agree with its details or not, is that this is not a partisan political uh, issue, but it's, it's something in the public good. And I'm sure Ms. Murray's hope uh, down the road is that the, the bill uh, will be adopted by all parties in, in the House of Commons. Um, let me say just very quickly that, that what, what is attempted in this bill is to strengthen the transparency regime around the Communication Security Establishment Canada and strengthen transparency in order to ensure this very important intelligence agency has the kind of public legitimacy in a democracy that it needs and people don't lose faith uh, in it and it can do its job properly. It's also designed to strengthen accountability both within government and in terms of independent review by the CSEC commissioner, the watchdog agency, and by parliament. When CSEC was given its first legal mandate back in 2001 in the immediate aftermath of the very scary 9-11 attacks, it was frankly that legislative mandate, unprecedented at its time, was an experiment. And the experiment has run its course. I think the experiment has proved faulty. Uh, it's not adequate to keep up with the times, keep up with technological change. And what this bill really attempts to do is not in any way undermine the powers of CSEC and its necessary activities on behalf of Canadians for public security but it really is designed just to bring it, bring it into the age of operations in which it now um, conducts itself in terms of technology, in terms of the legal controls, in terms of the need for transparency and, and accountability. It's a complex bill. Uh, many of the details are, are, are very difficult perhaps uh, for people to fully grasp, but it's been, been carefully thought over and I know that Ms. Murray intends to in, engage in further consultations uh, over the course of the summer before Parliament resumes again sometime uh, in the fall. I think, I think, frankly, it's, it's for me, as someone who's followed signals intelligence and intelligence activities in Canada for a very long time, it, it's a tremendous breakthrough to see Parliament's attention to uh, this issue. Uh, the government has, I think, frankly, not been prepared uh, to advance the accountability um, uh, measures needed around CSEC. The CSEC commissioner uh, promised greater transparency, sorry, the CSEC chief, Mr. Forster, promised greater transparency when he gave testimony to, to the Senate uh, back in February, but we haven't really seen any of that. Uh, over almost a decade now, uh, CSEC commissioners, again the agency, the independent agency that is the watchdog for this uh, organization, have complained time and time again in their annual reports that the, the powers that are given to the minister to secretly authorize CSEC to inadvertently co connect, collect the uh, communications of Canadians are inadequately framed and it makes their job very difficult. The government has not been prepared to step up to deal with those uh, successive and repetitive complaints by the watchdog agency itself. So uh, Ms. Murray has really stepped into the breach on this and, and I really do commend her uh, for taking on this, this issue, which may not win her a whole lot of votes in her constituency, but I think is very much in the public interest. So thank you.
Thank you for those comments. And uh, former Defence Minister, the Honourable uh, Jean-Jacques Blais, will tell you a bit about his experience as Defence Minister. Thank you. Uh, merci beaucoup, Madame. Je d'abord de l'invitation, et je tiens à vous féliciter de de cette initiative. Et je me joins au Professeur Walk uh, uh, pour indiquer que c'est vraiment Une, une petite révolution dans le, dans le système que, que vous y faites. I, I would stress the point that Professor Wark has, has made that this initiative is not um, about to weaken the security establishment. Quite to the contrary, it will strengthen the security establishment and its work and the effectiveness of its work. There is no question that accountability improves administration. And this is all about accountability. Uh, J'ai eu le, le grand privilège uh, durant uh, quasiment cinq ans d'être uh, ministre et de la Défense et aussi bien solliciteur général. Donc, j'ai vu effectivement uh, le travail qui se faisait par les institutions de, de renseignement au Canada durant cette période-là. Et en plus de ça, j'ai été durant sept ans membre du comité de surveillance des renseignements de sécurité, le César. And in that context, I was able to see the weaknesses that there were in the systems that, and how we addressed those weaknesses. The CSIS Act, which was brought in 1984, provided for the creation of CERC. And CERC was really a revolution in itself at the time. Uh, and in effect, it improved, in my view, the workings of the security service. And uh, because there was an openness in the sense that we had researchers who were able to review the files and identify what was going on. The initiative that is being addressed here is something of the same order, except that it brings the committee that is being proposed closer to parliament. It really makes parliament the accounting, the accountability agent of the the C the CSEC as it's now called we called it the CSE. Uh, I would point out to you that when I was Solicitor General, I had the power to issue warrants. It, they were ministerial warrants. They weren't judicial warrants for intercepts. That was changed with the CSIS Act, and to the good. In this instance, we're doing the same thing with the CSE. Or Madame is proposing. The same thing with the CSE and in my or the CSEC, and in my view, that is a very positive measure. When I was Minister of Defence, when I was made Minister of Defence, I was told that CSE, as it was then called, was um, within my votes for administrative reasons, but that I need not concern myself with its operation because I was not ministerially res ministerially responsible for it. Indeed, it was the Prime Minister's responsibility. And in fact, I don't, don't know how the Prime Minister of the day could have had the time to overview what was happening at CSE. And in effect, I don't see that there's been any improvement in terms of ministerial responsibility since my day. The best briefing I got relating to the operations of C CSE was in the Globe and Mail. And that was after three briefings that I'd received as Minister uh, of Defense, as Solicitor General, and as a member of CERC. Uh, so obfuscation is not, is not intentional often, but it may be cultural in certain, uh, in certain um, administrative in environments. Donc, il n'y a pas de doute que le... le, le Le, le centre, l'aspect crucial de la législation qui est proposée, c'est la reconnaissance du besoin d'imputabilité de l'exécutif dans ses exercices de renseignement de sécurité. Et c'est le Parlement qui doit être chargé, qui doit se charger de ce faire. Et le projet de loi qui est proposé hein, vise ce but. Et je félicite encore. Madame de, de, de bien le proposer, Madame Murray de bien le proposer. Et je suis très heureux d'avoir été invité de pouvoir participer. Merci. Merci, Monsieur. So, um, 
Est-ce est qu'il y a quelqu'un qui veut uh, poser des questions? Gail Smith? is being a private member's bill, you can't expend resources on this, so uh, I'm just wondering if you can tell me briefly how you're planning to do oversight on the chief. Uh, this is a bill that is responding to a need. Um, yes, there is in there that the committee can request uh, funds for its work, so it is not creating a specific amount of funds. Uh, over the course of the summer, I'm going to be consulting further on the bill. I hope to uh, secure the support of uh, members of the other parties and perhaps uh, some members from all of the, the other parties. And so if this is something that needs to be uh, that needs to be addressed, that I'll do that. But at this point, uh, it, it's not uh, clear that it would require a royal recommendation. Have you spoken at all with, um, sorry, Michelle Royal, my typeface. Um, have you spoken at all with, with the NDP in particular on this bill? Have you got any sense of whether they're ready to support this? I've had some discussions with, uh, with the NDP, uh, not in depth. I wanted to wait and present the bill first so that I had something tangible to discuss. But uh, uh, my expectation is that there are some similar objectives as expressed in a motion that the, uh, that the NDP have put forward on, on part of what this bill covers. So I'm looking forward to talking with them about it and hearing their input. And as I said, uh, I'll be consulting widely uh, over the course of the summer, and I will be in the uh, order of precedence in uh, September, so this bill will soon go to uh, to uh, debate. Uh, Just in line? Yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, so the committee is going to be basically sworn to secrecy because, of course, you're going to have to be cleared uh, for a fairly high level of uh, security. So. Given the fact that most of these MPs won't ever be able to speak about any details of what they're talking about in this committee, and of course will be not open to the public, um, does this really create a higher level of accountability and transparency for the broader public? There's a number of ways that this provides more accountability to the public. Uh, one of those is in the requirement for CSEC to also uh, provide an annual report. Um, another is that it strengthens the commissioner's mandate uh, for what he can look at, including uh, partnerships that the uh, and sharing of information across uh, agencies and, uh, and inside and outside of Canada. So that strengthens the uh, the watchdog's mandate, uh, and um, the members of parliament and members of the Senate will, of course, have to have a top security clearance they will be tabling a report to Parliament every year and uh, that, will, that will lay out the activities of the organization and of course with uh, respecting the, uh, the need for, uh, for a confidentiality on anything that might compromise uh, Canadian security. Dale Smith? Uh, this one might be more for Professor Lork, but how closely does part two of this bill hew to um, Hugh Siegel's bill or, or Wayne Easter's bill on this same topic about this creation of a committee? I'll let Ms. Murray respond to that yeah. and I can add some comments. But sure. it, it's, very, it's very similar to Hugh Siegel's bill that was also being supported by uh, Senator Romeo Dallaire. Um, one change that I've made in the bill is to uh, ensure that the, the Committee of Parliamentarians has fewer than 50 percent from any one party. So the committee will not reflect the composition of seats in the House. Uh, that means that there, won't, there will not be the possibility of any one party dominating the decisions and the reports of this committee. Uh, parties will need to work together, which, as you may recall, was one of the themes of my, uh, my Liberal Party leadership race uh, a year ago. question about one interesting line here. The, the first point that you've made in your in your description here of what the bill does says that um, the minister would need um, authorization to intercept Canadians' protective information, including metadata. metadata. That's right. Um, there's been a lot of discussion in committees about this, you know, in the recent months. Uh, do, do you feel like you'll be able to get the government on board, especially with that metadata section? Because Right now, they're really selling it as you know this isn't this isn't such scary information. It's it's just information about communication, mm -hmm. not the communication itself. 
So on that metadata front, do you think that'll be a bit of a fight from the, with the Conservatives to sell that point? I think the time has come for including metadata because, as I was saying earlier, uh, that is the the uh, where, when, how, why, and who of people's communication uh, with other with other people. Uh, so right now the government is saying that the collection of metadata is legal and some would argue it is because the law is so out of date. Uh, the uh, Supreme Court ruling of last week makes it very clear that metadata is protected communications. And so this is very consistent with what the Supreme Court ruling is saying and uh, I'm, I hope that the government will be paying attention to this Supreme Court ruling and recognize that it is time to protect uh, Canadians' metadata, which is what this bill proposes to do. Would anything in this bill be retroactive? Would anything in this bill give recourse to look into, uh, I guess, cases that have already happened, i.e. the airport uh, modeling case? It will be up to the committee to decide what they want to review. And so I haven't uh, prescribed whether they can look at past uh, operations or not. And uh, that's, that's part of the, the uh, committee's uh, powers of, um, of uh, creating the, the program that they think is necessary to do the job of accountability. Yeah. Uh, this section on getting uh, approval from the federal court for, um, regarding uh, CSE, looking at Canadians, uh, does that mean that there would need to be a security cleared section of the of the court or a certain number of security cleared judges or how does that work in that respect? It will work similarly to how it works with our um, major uh, ally to the south, which is the United States, and, and it will work similarly to how it works with CSIS, actually. So it would, re it shifts the authorizing power from a politician who may or may not have any expertise in the subject to a judge who will likely have expertise, but it, it adds uh, the element of a, a special advisor as part of that authorization process in the case where a, a requested authorization raises new legal uh, or technical issues. So it just moves it from a politician to a judge. In, in the, so going, going off Dale's question, so in the case where there's a really pressing situation and um, a communication would have to be intercepted quickly because maybe you have you know, a threat to our national security, security or something, would there be a process to expedite that request with the federal court? Um, because that, I can imagine that would take some time. It will take uh, some time to put the, the request together and that will be CSEC's uh, job to do. However, t the turnaround time may be faster, I'm told, than a ministerial authorization. And these courts have been known to turn around a request in a day. In the American context, I know the, uh, the board can add this too, in the American context, these, uh, what are these, I, I forget the acronym, but these, these courts that deal with these uh, these government requests for domestic spying uh, are kind of seen as lacking oversight, let me put it that way. They're, you know, secretive courts. They, there's been a lot of attention paid to the fact that they uh, perhaps don't do the due diligence of these requests because they are very clandestine at the end of the day. Do you have any concerns that these federal court full review process wouldn't be adequate enough or could just be effectively rubber stamped? I'm going to ask uh, Wesley to answer that question. I mean, sure, I think some of the, the concerns expressed in American context about how what's called the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court has operated in the past, um, uh, you know, are, are things that we took note of in thinking about how um, in, this would work in a Canadian context. Um, and, and to deal specifically with that kind of issue to ensure that the court never becomes a rubber stamp, and perhaps there's little likelihood of that in a Canadian context given the nature of our federal court. And, and with regard to the previous question, of course, there are already uh, especially security cleared federal court judges who deal with sensitive cases in terms of ceases warrants or security certificates. So we have a very experienced uh, set of judges with regard to these issues. But, but we have added two, f two features that, that would make this Canadian court process a little special. As Ms. Murray said, one is to have to ensure that there can be a special advocate role uh, whenever a federal court judge feels that's appropriate in terms of the, the, the issues placed before him with regard to a uh, request for acquisition of Canadian communications. And also, uh, again, to deal with this kind of rubber stamp potentiality, we've also indicated that um, 
whenever possible, federal court judges issuing rulings that allow CSEC uh, to intercept communications with Canadians, they will make those rulings public and the legal rationale behind them. And, th and that is really to keep pace with some reforms that are actually underway in the United States now. Thank you very much. Okay, merci de votre attention et votre intérêt.